It will take 1,000 sheets of pure gold to cover this mask of the mythical demon king, Ravana. He is a main character in Tai Khan, a traditional dance that depicts a battle between good and evil. For 600 years, artisans have dedicated their lives to making these masks. But the popularity of the dance has been dying out since the 1950s. Today, Prateep Radpoy is helping to keep the art alive. We went to Angtong, Thailand to see how the tradition of making these masks is still standing. Paper makes up the base of every con mask. And this clay mold will give it shape. Each mask requires a different kind, and Prateep has made dozens over the years. He covers it with petroleum jelly so the paper doesn't stick to it. It takes him two hours to build 10 layers of paper. There are four main characters in Khan. Heroes, heroines, monkeys and demons. They depict characters from the battle between Rama and Ravana, two kings who represent good and evil. Monkeys make up Rama's army of warriors fighting to save the heroine from Ravana. Today, Prateep is making the mask of the demon king for a performance. He shapes the face with strips of white cement he's prepared. It's a discomfort Prateep has become used to. He learned mass making from his uncle when he was 14 years old. To this day, many of his family members still perform con with the masks he creates. Prateep shapes the decorative details of the crown one by one using a stencil. This pattern is common in Thai architecture, often seen at Buddhist temples and monasteries. There are over 300 variations of Khan masks, and Prateep has memorized them all. Then it's time to cover the crown in gold. Other mask makers use paint, but he only uses pure leaves of 0.03 carats each. This technique is called gilding. Gold for a mask this size can cost 10,000 Thai baht, or $260. Prateep is careful to not waste. The brush helps him get to the narrow corners. It takes him up to three hours to gild one mask. Today, he works alone in his small workshop. Pradeep uses plank wood to make the outer details like the ears. Then it's time to paint. The colors must be vibrant, so audiences can see even the smallest detail clearly on stage. Ravana's skin is usually green or dark blue, and he has fierce facial features. In the past, mask makers made paint from extracts of flowers and tree barks. But now, most opt for waterproof acrylic paint to save time. 
อันนี้สีของของบางทีก็ใช้ของอเมริกาดีก็ใช้ของญี่ปุ่น Jewels like these can be used to signify the power a con character holds. He assembles Ravana's three-tier crown. The two heads represent his ten heads and connection to the Hindu god Brahma. Finally, the mask is ready for performance. Con originally was only performed during royal ceremonies in the Ayutthaya period, from the 14th to the 18th century. The craft nearly disappeared when film and television became a more popular form of entertainment in the 1950s. It regained some popularity in the 1990s when the Thai queen s i r i k i t promoted it, but it never made a full comeback. Nowadays, performing art schools teach the dance across the country. Khan combines multiple art traditions in Thailand, including sword fighting. And shadow puppetry. It pulls inspiration from Buddhism and the Hindu story of Ramayana. Students start as young as eight years old and must endure years of training in classical dance, martial arts, and acting. It's a bit of a pain to get my heart beat. And I know the eyes of the eye are not that sharp. And the way the eyes are shot. m a n i p r a p a k h o n a r d has dedicated most of her life to Khan, but there was a time she wouldn't be allowed to do this at all. Up until the 18th century, only men could perform, even in the female roles. m a n i p r a p a has learned from her grandfather, who is a master. Her group mainly dances at school events, cultural festivals, and funerals. ความฝันตอนนี้คืออยากจะเป็นครูสอนรำสอนโคนค่ะอยากจะจบบัณฑิตนาฏศิลป์ที่เรียนอยู่แล้วก็เป็นครูสอนรำแบบเต็มตัวเพื่อสืบสานวัฒนธรรม Pratip believes the only way to save his craft is to preserve the tradition. But the past few years have been tough. Since all live performances came to a halt during the pandemic, Pratip didn't get new orders for months and was forced to move his workshop away from Bangkok to save money. I never thought that the virus is still there and it makes it difficult to solve the problem. No one thought about this problem. But he managed to stay afloat. Nowadays, he sells about two or three masks a month, mainly to tourists. But he still worries his craft may not survive another crisis like the pandemic. That's why passing it on to the next generation is so important to him. He's trained dozens of people over 40 years. อาชีพนี้ยังมีพวกที่เขาเรียนสูงกว่าเรายังต้องมาฝึกษาเราเนี่ยมันก็เออเขาให้เกียรติเราเขาเทียบเราว่าเราออกแบบได้แล้วตีความหมายได้ And he hopes his masks will continue to tell the story of Thailand's rich culture. ผมจ่ายเพราะที่เรารักษาไออาชีพนี้ที่เป็นอาชีพที่เก่าแก่ตั้งกับรัชกาลที่หนึ่งปลายอายุทยาด้วย This is the Still Standing team. Over the past year, we've met artisans from around the world who preserve traditional methods and techniques, like preparing soy sauce in Japan, cleaning leather in Morocco, and making the perfect mirrors in India. If you enjoy our videos, please like and subscribe to see more stories about the people keeping centuries-old traditions alive. And if you have an idea for a video you'd like to see. Let us know in the comments. Thank you.